First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Nestle Health Science for providing me with the opportunity to speak to you about something that I think is extremely interesting and also important. And I was given the task to discuss muscle and function during the aging journey. Can nutrition contribute to prevention or treatment of sarcopenia? So I will kind of give a more life perspective on uh, May, perhaps focusing on, of course, then the nutrition and the muscles. And these are my disclosure statement. So the challenge is to identify what promotes function and healthy aging. And I'm sure you recognize this slide, but perhaps more in the osteoporosis field where we in early life are striving for maximize the peak. In this case, maximize the muscle mass peak. And during adult life, the challenge is then to maintain the peak in order to have something to start with when you are st starting to really lose. So in older life, we strive for minimizing losses. And of course, the founding concept we discuss is sarcopenia, which I'm sure among you is really not an emerging concept. But on the whole, even in the healthcare system, sarcopenia is still emerging. Although it was like 35 years ago now when Erwin Rosenberg and his colleagues in Boston coined this term, and he said at that time that no single feature of age-related decline so dramatically affect ambulation, mobility, and independence. And over the years, we have definitely come a long way, but we still struggle, I think many of you also struggle, with introducing and incorporating the sarcopenia concept in everyday care. We know that muscle mass declines. We have a loss of up to 50% up to a very old age. It's mainly after the age of 50 we recognize that, perhaps even later than that. And it's mainly the strong and fast type 2 fibers we lose, and by that we also lose strength. So sarcopenia is a syndrome with a progressive loss of muscle strength and mass, which is linked to adverse outcomes. This is an old slide and a small cross-sectional study, but I think, still think it's quite illustrating of the body composition transition from, from younger age up to older age. This was a group of men, 20 to 80, they all had the similar body mass index, and it's, always, it's not always easy to see what is behind the skin costume? But so for that reason, body composition was made. And as you can see, the younger men, they had twice as much muscle as fat. And you see there is a continuous decrease of muscle mass and an increase in fat mass. So the older men, they had twice as much fat as the uh, younger men. Sarcopenia, as you know, is uh, defined by the European Working Group of Sarcopenia and Older People, which is one of three major uh, diagnostic tools or approaches where you combine reduced strength, mainly a hand grip, with uh, low muscle mass. And just to, I, I think we can agree that it's mainly after the age of 70 we see the, the prevalence increases. And this we have a, a, a compilation of 19 systematic reviews with 33,000 uh, participants. And you can see that there is a wide range uh, in the prevalence of sarcopenia. And of course, the closer you get to the uriatric ward, the higher you will have the, the incidence. OK, I will talk about nutrition. If nutrition has a role for prevention and treatment of sarcopenia. And then I will start to show you data from this new age study, which is a European study performed in Italy, Poland, UK, and the Netherlands, where 1,000 about older people 
uh, did a, a one-week food registration, and food patterns, food nutrients were related then to a calculated sarcopenia risk score, which was uh, calculated by hand grip strength and by DEXA mainly. And interestingly, and as expected, proteins strongly correlate, the protein intake correlated in this group with a reduced sarcopenia risk. But perhaps a little bit surprising was that vegetable proteins had a stronger association with reduced sarcopenia risk than animal proteins. Also, I think interesting and perhaps a little bit surprising was that the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated fatty acids together with a low intake of saturated fatty acids also decreased the risk of sarcopenia. And also fiber, high fiber intake had a relation with muscle mass, which of course I think is good news for many of us. Uh, from the Baltimore Longitudinal Study of Aging, uh, the researchers in 1,400 patients did a six-year median follow-up. The study was about 11 years, where they related adherence to the MIND diet, which is a combination of Mediterranean diet and the DASH diet, which is mainly focusing on intake of berries and fish. So what they could see was that adherence, a low adherence, was uh, then related to an increase of reduced um, uh, performance. This is a healthy aging body composition uh, uh, performance, uh, physical performance battery. Uh, and also grip strength was increased by a higher adherence to the MIND diet. So for each increase in this uh, 0 to 15 point scale was uh, related to an increase, quite, uh, I would say, sig clinically significant increase in hand grip strength. So the conclusion here was that adherence to a plant-based plant diet with focus on berries and fish is, was associated with better function and grip strength. And you can see the age span is quite big here. Let me give you some, let me give me some uh, examples uh, from, from uh, my own uh, practice in Uppsala. We have had the opportunity to follow from the beginning two and a half thousand uh, 50 year old Swedish men, the Uppsala Longitudinal Study of Adult Men. At the year of, of 70, we did a, a quite uh, a, a, a good f food recall. And at that time, Let's, at 17 years later, we had data on DEXA and hand grip strength. So we were able then to compile a Mediterranean diet score and to make a long story short, high adherence to a Mediterranean-like diet reduced the risk for sarcopenia by, by 30%. And this was in older males. Perhaps a little bit uh, uh, surprising data. Christine Franson also used the same cohort, but she was looking on factors related to an independent aging, factors at 70 related to independent aging at 86. And also a little bit surprising, I think, was that the Mediterranean-like diet had the strongest predicting uh, capacity, together with never smoking and not being obese. And we may speculate for, for the reasons for this. And of course, the inflammation, reduced inflammation, reduced uh, oxidation is probably important, at least in younger ages, because probably the protein intake at younger ages or in middle age is not really a problem. Pro people usually eat more proteins than they, they have to. So I just came across a study on uh, 9,000 British police officers where diet history was related to the risk of having an increased inflammatory activity. And if you had a polyphenol intake in the third and fourth quartile, you had a 24% reduced risk of elevated CRP. 
And the good, story, the good news is perhaps that the phenol intake mainly came from coffee, tea, but also from vegetables. Another Swedish uh, experience is, is from the Gothenburg uh, H70 study. This is cross-sectional data based on diet history, but also then on, on uh, appendicular lean mass from DEXA and grip strength. And interestingly, gait speed and grip strength were, it, very few people actually had reduced uh, these functions. So there were no correlations with any of the, all the, the nutrients that were, were assessed. But muscle mass, related with several of these nutrients. And interestingly then, with the polyunsaturated fatty acids, with protein, iron, zinc, vitamins B, and D. So this issue about polyunsaturated fatty acids, I, I would of course say that data are not strongly consistent, but I think we still have a piling number of studies indicating that an intake of, of essential fatty acids are good for your muscles also. So uh, in this study of 104 uh, older healthy, uh, provided with omega-3 fatty acids for in a randomized controlled trial for six months, showed that thigh muscle volume increased, hand grip strength increased, and one repetition uh, maximum strength also increased. So. But there are also, I have to say, studies that are negative on, on this issue. Also coming back to Uppsala, we uh, engaged like 40 normal weight, mainly students, uh, for a six-week randomized control trials. It was called the muffin study because they were randomized to have muffins either baked on palm oil or butter or on of uh, 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 linoleic acid, which was sunflower oil. And the primary outcome was liver fat accretion and body fat, and as expected, or as the hypothesis was, fat increasion in the liver was decreased by PUFA intake. But perhaps a side uh, observation was that lean tissue increased in the group that had the high intake of PUFA. Okay, now we come to the, uh, perhaps the protein issue that many of you <laughs> were waiting for. Why is he talking about everything but protein? So, but, of course, protein is one of the major stimulator for protein synthesis. And I will just show you two uh, more or less iconic studies that you perhaps uh, know very well for coming from the Health ABC study. Uh, these are observational studies, 2,000 older people, three-year follow-up, muscle mass by DEXA was uh, related to protein intake. And you can see that with a higher protein intake, the reduction in lean mass decreased. So if you belong to the, uh, the quintile with the lowest intake, you lost close to one kilogram, and obviously uh, with, when you had a higher protein intake, you lost less. And a number of years later, the same group came back and showing also that if you, now they, they measured or related the protein intake with um, reduced walking capacity and reduced stair walking capacity. One third of the group uh, displayed mobility limitation. And if you had the, those in the highest quartile, had a uh, doubled reduced risk, or how you say it, to uh, have uh, mobility limitations six years later. Another uh, example of which I think, I think, of course, it's extremely important to combine protein intake and physical activity. And I will show you one example from a study we did in um, nursing homes in the Stockholm area. 120 residents, oh, they were old, and they were uh, randomized uh, due to, to their uh, care homes. Intervention was sit to stand exercises four times per day and a protein-rich drink. And 
interestingly was that the intention to treat analysis showed that the weight and the muscle mass increased uh, in the whole group, but share rising capacity we could only see in subgroup analysis among those that were sarcopenic at the start, that complied to the intervention, and that had high consumption of the oral nutritional supplementation. You know, and there's probably still controversies around the protein intake. Still, not all national officer, offices uh, provide recommendations for increased, high, uh, high, increased intake of protein in, in older. But among the professionals in the field, I think we are quite, have a strong agreement. And these are the recommendations coming from an EU GMS uh, initiative that healthy old at least in the, should have at least in the range of one to 1.2 grams per protein, uh, grams protein per kilogram body weight. And I think you're well aware of that. And Jürgen was uh, the, the main author for this paper. And uh, later ESPEN uh, guidelines uh, indicated that when you are uh, acutely or chronically ill or frail, you need even more. Very recently, there, not very, but recently there was a systematic review and meta-analysis of seven studies in 3,000 more plus community dwelling older people that came with the conclusion that older adults with sarcopenia consume significantly less protein than peers with no sarcopenia. So by that, I'm coming to my conclusion, my summary. When it comes to maximizing the peak, I think I only provide an educated guess because we don't really have the, the good data. But good general nutrition and exercise when up to the age of like 20, 25. I'm a little bit concerned about the food habits in younger people. Uh, they eat way too much of sugar. They probably, many of them, have an essential fatty acid deficiency. And they, as you know, they don't move at all. I wouldn't say that, but they move too little. So when it comes to adult life, at least the data I have shown you, you should stick to a plant-based Mediterranean-like food diet, rich in mufa and pufa instead of butter, fish rather than animal meat, fruits, berries, and coffee, and of course, you combine that with exercise, uh, both endurance and strength. And then when it comes to people that we live with in the older, older life, I think that the, the kind of regular everyday food should still be the kind of Mediterranean-like food, but you have, and plant-based, but you have to be very cautious about the protein intake. And of course, for many that we work with, they definitely need protein supplementation as well. So focus on protein intake. Vitamin D should never be low, but the more is not the better. And of course, extremely important, perhaps we will hear about that next, to combine protein with strength training. Okay, thank you.